And so it begins. What makes a garden a garden? We'll take our first breath with no memory of who we were before. Yet, we are inexorably drawn to the light. We fight. We die. And we live again. for a reason, by something greater than ourselves. For as deep and wide as humanity's rivers have run, it has now been reduced to a precious few, needing something to believe in and a place to call home. This is what we have been called to, the future that we fight for. The future we will protect. Shaped by the fires of each new battle, we are forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. What's going on guys, it's Zenix here back with another video for you guys and today where we talk about the Destiny 2 reveal stream and everything that was in it that we want to talk about. Now, with my type of videos, I do like to make notes of everything that in the stream that uh, really popped out to me. So if there is something that I missed that you guys wanted to talk about, make sure to leave it in the comment section down below. But otherwise, I have a lot of stuff that we're going to cover. And uh, we're going to do short covering of each thing just to pack it all into one video. And then we will space out some different videos here in the next few days of just talking about everything else uh, for a longer period of time. This is more of a straight up recap sort of video. So without further ado, um, if you guys could leave a like down below and I'll subscribe for more Destiny content. We're going to be doing Destiny 2 coverage all summer long and just everything man it's gonna be crazy so without further ado guys let's get straight into the video so I have notes written down like crazy of just from the beginning of the stream to the end of the stream of what I wanted to talk about and that first thing would be that Zavala in the beginning was using an M16 assault rifle which uh, appeared to look like that and um, you know it was him when he was like I guess a lot younger I wouldn't say a lot younger but it was in the beginning of the war before they actually built the last city this was when they were just starting to build it up by taking uh, shelter underneath the traveler now will we have this weapon in the game I don't know but I did want to point that out because I do love you know our kind of generation guns right now in these type of games another thing that was going on was that we were using old supers in this trailer as well and he was actually using a one-handed fist of havoc Zavala was now I don't know if that's actually going to be a thing in the game I just thought it was really badass and you know maybe they will give us revamped sort of supers from the first game in the second one um, which is some small changes to it and uh, that would be really cool so I'm really looking forward to that as well now this is around the midstream where they were talking about things that they want, which is uh, three things that Bungie wants. And they said a world that pulls you in is the first thing, so they really redid the world, made them bigger and more advanced and fun to explore, as well as amazing things to do in the game. Now, uh, amazing things in the world itself, I should say, as well as there's not, there's a lot more to do besides just patrols now. You can go explore the world 
find certain things, find even AIs in the world that you could talk to and actually do side quests for like you would in a regular MMO. And uh, so you can do all that as well as world dungeons. Now, um, these are short dungeons that you could fight specific little small boss enemies in and, you know, get the loot. It's kind of like a loot cave sort of deal, except you're actually going to be fighting a boss and not sitting all the way outside of the loot cave, shooting them as they spawn. Now, Nightfalls and Raids are available to all players now, as well as 4v4 PvP only. Now, all the modes in the new Crucible style mode is all 4v4. It's all across 4v4. That's it. They said they are totally revamping the Crucible to make it more competitive, and I'm guessing this is because of a lot of backlash for esports readiness in Destiny itself, so I think they are trying to take a step back and remake that more esports ready so we can actually see more tournaments and such in the future of Destiny 2. Now, they also show off the first mission, which is called Homecoming. Now, this is going to be where we first come back to the tower and, you know, try and fight off the Red Legion, which is the new force that, uh, you know, the leader Gary, or Gull, um, commands and tries to take out the tower and succeeds in taking it out, as well as the whole last city, and you're fighting back to try and take it. Now, there's some interesting things that I want to talk about as well which were these type of rifts that the warlock was using when he would just like throw something down on the ground that would create a circle around him. Now, there's one called Healing Rift and one called Empowering Rift. Now, these, I'm not sure what they exactly do, but Empowering Rift, I'm guessing, gives you some sort of damage boost to the enemies in healing, obviously healing you or maybe fire team members and such, but it was de definitely a randomly interesting uh, thing to do, and it doesn't look like it was dedicated to your super ability, but maybe to an artifact that you are holding. We also have a grenade launchers in the game now, as well as uh, a death machine looking sort of gun that's, uh, I think, an SMG or assault rifle, and uh, it's going to be freaking crazy. Players will lose all of their powers, homes, and vaults, though, so we will lose our supers no matter what. We are fighting in that homecoming mission to try and, you know, stop them from taking all the light away from us, but we do fail, and uh, we have to recover and find our new ways to fight the enemy. And that will bring us to the new supers in just a moment. Now, we also know the names of the new supers, which is Dawnblade for the Warlock, which gives the Warlock a, like, fire sword that it just looks freaking epic. While, like, in the air, you can swing the sword and, like, throw this fire at the enemies down below coming off the sword, and apparently does a lot of damage and just looks freaking awesome. Now, the Titan is a sentinel that uses a shield that can be thrown at enemies, and it'll bounce off enemies and, you know, go back and forth between enemies. Kind of like an area of effect sort of deal for the Titan, and uh, that's pretty sweet as well. And then we have the Arc Strider for the Hunter, which is a spear that the Hunter is going to be using, and that is Arc. The Dawnblade is Solar, and it is Void for Sentinel. It looks like we're also going to be using tanks in Destiny 2, not just sparrows and the ships now, but also tanks. We saw a little bit of this gameplay of looking like we were using a tank to fight off some enemies and also other tanks in these trailers, so that is pretty interesting. Now, for the weapon slots, we have Kinetic Weapon, Power Weapon, and Energy Weapon. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was the Power Weapon or the Energy Weapon. It was one of those two that is kind of like our new Heavy, and those type of weapons are going to be the badass, kick-ass, awesome weapons that are just like weird and cool as hell to use like you know the prototype kind of weapons and uh, so yeah we're gonna have those in the heavy slot and then also we can carry uh, two primaries in two different slots so we can have an assault rifle in one slot and we can also have a scout in the other if that's how they were explaining it to be then that would be the truth and uh, I think that's pretty freaking crazy now for a little bit of the story we do have Gary who wants to take all the light away from the Guardians he believes that the travelers power should be his and not the human race's power so in order to take that he comes and destroys the tower and looks to be using some kind of crazy machine that grabs a hold of the traveler and maybe he's trying to take it away from us so just forcing it away from us so he can take the power for himself we have new story missions as well as more cinematic story to the game they really emphasize the more story of destiny 2 because of how bad the story was in destiny 1 which you know they kind of struggled to put out you know the right amount of cinematics and the right amount of story missions in the first game so they are stepping it up for the second one and we will see some better improvement on that when Steve Cotton took the stage, he was talking about Destiny 2 more to do than any game at Bungie. Now, by this, I mean they have so much to do. Like, there is more stuff to do in this game than there was that any game they've ever made at Bungie. So, the Halo series, you know, the first Destiny game, all of that jazz. There's going to be more to do in this game than any of those. That is insane. 
Now, we do have strikes are coming back, and the newest strike is called the Inverted Spire. Now, this strike is going to have a three-stage boss, and it is going to be on the New World Nessus. Now, they are going to be able to play the strike there. All the people that were invited to go there, they didn't actually show us much of the strike itself, but just a couple of clips that looked as if. So, uh, that's unfortunate, but we will see more of that strike probably in the Destiny 2 beta. Now, like I was saying earlier, they totally remade the Crucible to be better with 44 across all game modes. Now they have a new HUD and also new info about opponents. So you will be able to tell when certain enemies have supers or other things that they did not fully explain. So that's pretty interesting. There's new maps, new modes, and says the best PvP Destiny ever saw. There's also one of the new modes, Countdown, which is the first time there's an attack and defend mode, which looks to be sort of like a capture the flag sort of deal, but I'm not too sure, and don't take my word for it, that it is capture the flag, because uh, it does look interestingly different, so uh, we will see about that, and uh, now obviously we do have a brand new raid, which is going to be the Cabal Raid. Now, they didn't emphasize much on the new raid itself, besides saying that there is going to be a new one, and they're going to show it off at some point later in the summer. One of the other things we can do as we uh, explore is we can actually launch all activities in the world without going to orbit. So now we do not have to go to orbit in order to do certain activities like start a new mission or something, you know, just retarded like that. You know, we don't have to do that anymore. We can just activate it all from our map. Some of the stuff in the world we still have is patrols and public events with heroic objections. Some of the new stuff we have exploring the world is treasure maps, lost sectors to discover, and new characters in the world like we said earlier. Now the lost sectors are the dungeons and we can, like I said earlier as well, go through those, take down the bosses, and discover some loot at it. And the treasure maps will lead us to certain locations, like just like a regular treasure map would do in real life. You're going to follow this treasure map and try and see if you can get all the way to that treasure itself and get whatever it is that's hidden there. There's also adventures with new mechanics and encounters that make your guardian stronger. So that was one of the things they emphasized about talking the, about the Lost Sectors dungeons um, with making your guardian stronger. So maybe there are certain things that we can obtain by taking down these dungeons instead of just loot. Hence the rifts. I was saying earlier, the healing rift and the empowering rift. Maybe there's certain relics that we can achieve by taking down these dungeons and making our guardian stronger. Also, the new worlds are Io, Titan, Nessus. Now they said four new worlds even though it showed Earth, Io, Titan, Nessus. So I'm not sure what they meant by that unless they just mean new areas to explore on Earth itself because otherwise you know Earth is not new we've been exploring that one in Destiny 1 now we have the EU dead zone now they just said European dead zone whatever I just emphasize EU but either way it's the largest destination they ever built there's AI camps there that that these AIs have made to you know it's like kinda like small tower sort of deal you know it's a small social space where you can chill out and have some fun with uh, the AIs there that they built now I'm guessing there's obviously side quests there that you can pick up and go do throughout the world as well. So that is pretty insane. Now Titan is the moon of Saturn and Zavala will go there to heal after the battle of the tower and trying to keep it. And there's crazy methane ocean on the freaking planet. That's, that's, uh, that's a little absurd. Cade goes to Nessus and Vex kind of changed that planet to be theirs. They redid the planet by adding a lot of uh, their technology to the planet, forming it to be more of theirs. So Nessus is definitely going to be a big Vex style planet and probably going to see a lot of Vex enemies as well as Vex lore and so on and so forth. Io is a sulfuric moon of Jupiter, which Ikora is on that planet uh, recovering and doing whatever she's doing. Now one of the coolest things I've been wanting for a long time is uh, the clans to be actually introduced into the game itself instead of having to go to the website, changing everything, blah 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 blah. It just wasn't fun. It was hard for people to join clans. And now they've totally redid this. Emmy Chung, social lead, she came out on the stage and talked about in Destiny 2 clans are coming into the game. Now there's going to be in-game rosters, tools to build fire teams, and custom banners for clans. Now also there's going to be reward systems for the clan. So whenever we probably level up certain things in the clan, we will get rewards for that, which is pretty awesome. It gives people an objective to help out the clan grow, which really helps out when I'm in my mind, because otherwise you could get lost on just doing what you want to do. You know, you've done whatever it is you want to do. There's not much left that you can do or want to do. But this gives us a certain objective to get these objectives done to give us our rewards and stuff like that. So that is really awesome. And the banners look awesome. It's, it's going to be awesome. Now, there's a new type of system they also planned out, which is guided games. It's a system where solo players and clans can meet and play together 
let's say we have six people in a raid and the sixth person has to go there's only five left we need a quick guardian to get in here everybody's scrambling to try and get one more person a friend that may not be online maybe have to go to the forums and try and find somebody there well we can actually set that group to be an open and a solo player if they want can see that oh they're on that point in the raid let's go see if we can help them out and have some fun now this is sort of their new introduction instead of matchmaking which matchmaking like she said on stage would bring too much toxicity to the game because of how toxic players can be by being thrown together with random people it would just create a lot of trolling and it would just go downhill really fast so I'm glad they decided to keep matchmaking out of the game sorry for everybody that really wanted it but this guided games is definitely a good feature and I can't wait to see it in action now the beta is going to be coming out later this summer as well like I said earlier it's going to be probably at the end of July is my prediction and Destiny 2 for PC is going to be on Battle.net. Now, there was a leak about an hour before the stream started, and Cooch uh, posted it on Twitter. Shout out to N. Cooch. Uh, he, ta he told us about this leak, and it was actually spot on, everything in that leak was. Now, none of us really believed it, because especially in the beginning, it said Destiny 2 was going to be on Battle.net. That just didn't sound right. It didn't sound like a thing that was going to happen, but it is. It's going to be on Battle.net. Bungie and Blizzard are partnering together to get this on Battle.net, and and play it straight from there. Now they have some emphasis on a new character Hawthorne where she actually creates her own sort of clan inside the game. Now it's not by clan I don't mean you know our own style of clan that they're gonna be adding as well to the game. It's just like her own little AI sort of clan deal on on a planet in the camp so that's pretty cool. Now since they did emphasize about her being a new character and blah 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 I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of stuff that we're gonna have to do for her so we can look forward to that being one of the characters that we have a lot of side quests to do. Now for the rest of this video we're going to talk about a couple little things that I saw and wanted to talk about and then like I said we are going to put everything else into a different video because this video is already long as hell probably gonna be 16 18 minute sort of video so I hope you guys enjoyed and you know loved all the information but without further ado let's get straight into the end of this and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Now in an older video that we saw we saw ships like your spaceships that you were in orbit with dropping off guardians just in the middle of battle or whatever just going to the patrol you just see him getting dropped off now it showed that again for destiny 2 when it showed mainly a solo player joining a raid group it showed the ship just coming down really close to the ground and then just the guardian you know spawning right onto the ground and then the ship flies away now this is something that like I said we saw before in older videos a couple years ago that people said that they took out of the game now was this actually taken out of the game or was this meant for destiny 2 and uh, we just didn't know that all along there was also a placeable barrier that I saw that I think it was the Titan that threw it down kind of literally just a wall in front of him that he threw down that was white and what I wanted to say why I explained that's white um, with the emphasis on that is because earlier when we were talking about the rifts they were also white when the warlock threw him on the ground which makes me think that this is a type of kinetic ability that we have for all the guardians to use like I said earlier with artifacts now I'm not completely sure about this this is just a theory but it is looking kind of solid so far with how this stuff is being led to belief one more thing I did want to talk about is the rocket launcher that we see at one point in the reveal and that is the rocket launcher that we saw in Taken King now it was a rocket launcher that's never been released in Destiny 1 that looks like a microphone on the front and we finally see it in action in Destiny 2 why did this get leaked so long ago and it's now being in Destiny 2? What happened? Why did this why did this go into craziness? Because this was released into the armory when Taken King came out. It was a certain weapon that we thought was going to be specially released later on in Destiny year 3 maybe, but it's not the case. It's going to be in Destiny 2. Not too sure what Bungie has going on with that concept, but otherwise a lot of the other new exotic weapons coming into this game look amazing as well. We're going to talk more about that in a different video as this video is already at 20 minutes mark so uh, I hope you guys did enjoy the video this is just a small recap of everything that I wanted to talk about in the game in the gameplay trailer everything else you will see on screen as well as we will be posting more videos probably later today as well as tomorrow and so on and so forth about more information there are some things that I spotted and do want to talk about so like I said those will be in a different video but without but with all of that being said I am pumped for this new game you're gonna see a lot more of me doing destiny 1 videos and doing a lot of destiny 1 streaming so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and make sure to support it because we are going to be back in action and going crazy here very soon without further ado guys thank you all for watching I really appreciate it make sure to please comment like subscribe and as always guardians harmony within hurricane without and I'll see you all in the next video